Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Family Said Dan channel. Every now and then I notice that a bunch of analysts independently come to somewhat similar conclusions about the future uh, price expectation for XRP, and today is one of those times. In fact, we even have XRP haters out there anticipating that XRP price is probably going to go way, way, way higher. Even uh, legendary chart analyst Peter Brandt, who uh, has in the past called XRP an outright scam. <laughs> I mean, even he says, yeah, it looks like it's probably gearing up for a big old pump. I'll get you his exact words as we get into the video here, but that's the message that's being sent here. Um, and so there's, and there's no shortage of crypto media stories covering this, but I, I just, I got to acknowledge here, like there's, there just seems to be this general consensus that, uh, hey, we're on the cusp of something very big happening. And it's interesting to me that people are citing this, um, you know, the chart analyst types, they're citing this just because of what they see in the charts. So n never mind the fact that we have the uh, end of the SEC v. Ripple case coming up here at some point in the future, relatively near future. Yes, we have that, and as long as that goes well, you would anticipate that that would result in a tremendous run for XRP. But they're saying even outside of that, if you just look, in fact, look at this headline from the Crypto Basic, XRP set to break major year-long resistance gearing for parabolic pump. No shortage of examples for this. And also I want to highlight towards the later part of this video, something I just, I don't see this frequently discussed, but a popped up at an article. I was like, yes, I want to talk about this. It's, it's the concept that frankly, there's not that much crypto out there. You can talk about Bitcoin. You can talk about XRP. There's not that much actually available for sale. Right now, there legitimately isn't. And then you factor in that way less than 1% of humans have ever held XRP at any point in time, and it already had an all-time high half a decade ago of close to four bucks. Well, what happens as we get clarity here and more and more people as time passes uh, jump into crypto for the first time and institutional money in an increasingly big way jumps in? I'm just telling you, there's not that much out there. And almost, and if even if you look at the market cap, most of it's not for sale right now. You can't go to an exchange and buy the vast majority of XRP in existence. But uh, before going further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. All right, as I record, this XRP is at 48 cents, Bitcoin at 30586 bucks, market cap for the asset class $1.19 trillion, and Bitcoin dominance at 49.8%. Happy to see that. I'll let it run a little bit higher. And then eventually money's going to cycle out of Bitcoin into other large cap coins. Bitcoin dominance go down, rinse and repeat. We've seen this a ton of times before. Uh, here's the Crypto Fear Ingredients Index at 62 out of 100. So uh, the lovable, cuddly little retail lemmings out there, uh, they're sleeping pretty easy. They're feeling like greedy sons of bitches out there. 62 out of 100. Uh, you just wait <laughs> until we get that conclusion in the SEC v. Ripple case, though, because that's something that could shift the entire market. I mean, because there's never been a large cap coin that's gone through this type of, you know, legal experience, let's say. So if we do get positive clarity, uh, I think XRP would run the hardest as a result of that. But it's not unreasonable to suppose that at least perhaps, you know, other coins will as well. Maybe just positive for alts in general, maybe the entire space. Now, <laughs> some headlines do make me chuckle a little bit. This one's also from the Crypto Basic. It's, it's titled... Historical patterns could result in 482% or 51,000% increase for XRP, leading to $3.30 or $250. Okay, so, look, you know me. I'm Mr. XRP Bull here. I'm a big optimist. Uh, XRP is my largest crypto holding, my favorite cryptocurrency for a ton of reasons here. Now, if you're talking about it getting close to the all-time high, you know, they, here they cite $3.30. Okay. But it's, it's either that or $250. Oh, Okay. A little bit of a gap in between those two numbers, I noticed. 51,000%. I got to chuckle a little bit. Like, come on, guys. That's 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 a little bit out there, don't you think? And I'm not saying that, you know, XRP couldn't be three digits in the future. I, I don't know if it'll ever happen, but I, the idea of that happening doesn't sound wacky. There's way more money on the planet in existence today that could flow into that resulting in a huge bump up in price. Like, there's there's way more money than would need to exist for that to happen. So it doesn't mean it's going to happen. But if you're talking about in the short term, XRP hitting 250 bucks, you done lost me, son. It just <laughs> ain't happening in the short term here. Um, and then there's this headline that I was citing at the outset of the video talking about a parabolic pump for XRP. XRP set to break major year-long resistance, gearing for parabolic pump. And I just kind of want to make more of a, a broad point here. I keep seeing this from tons of analysts. And they cited a couple in this article. Like, for instance, here's a... An analyst uh, named Crypto Michael, and earlier this month he tweeted out, XRP is approaching a major resistance level, which has held for an entire year. 
if it successfully clears this level, it will result in a parabolic pump. And then a few days ago, he wrote, when XRP hits the major resistance again, it should break it. And then they cite another analyst here who I'm not familiar with, more crypto online. Not familiar, not, not saying anything positive or negative, just noting, haven't seen this particular individual before, not that it means anything. Uh, but they cite positive expectation there too. But this isn't all that I've seen. In, in fact, um, how many of you out there uh, caught uh, the latest video from the blockchain backer? Um, I'm not going to regurgitate TA. I, I try and stay away from that type of stuff as much as possible, but happy to talk about the perspective shared. And part of what was discussed here is all that although the number that he's most famously cited he expect XRP may hit when it finally goes would be that $10 to $13 range, uh, he did acknowledge that there, you know, in theory, could be a, a, a burst well past that when it, when it finally goes up to the $25 region. And not that he's making the prediction that it's going to happen. It's more so that he's just acknowledging that, you know, there's, there's a path forward to where in the charts it could make sense. And again, if you want to know the specifics of that, I encourage you to go check out his channel. He does a fantastic job breaking the, uh, down the ideas and concepts, concepts himself. But I just thought I'd highlight, again, there's no shortage of analysts that are expecting big moves sooner than later in XRP. And so um, he tweeted out, um, uh, here, this is the blockchain backer, XRP bull run price based on Elliott Wave Triangle and past versus 2021 Bitcoin and Ethereum bull runs. Or maybe it was technically yesterday's video, but I watched it uh, today anyway. But um, And then somebody tagged Peter Brandt. Now, Peter Brandt, he's, he's a, one of the most well-known analysts in all of crypto. And he's actually been a trader for decades and decades and decades. Um, does not like XRP, thinks it's a scam. So he's entitled to a silly nonsense opinion, but I don't need people to agree with me about, you know, which cryptocurrency has lost some sauce in order for me to be interested in hearing their perspective necessarily. I just think he's wrong. That's fine. Whatever. Um, so he, and by the way, he's in crypto. One of the things he's more famous for is, remember when I jumped into uh, crypto in late 2017, he called the top of that market cycle, December 2017. And he also called the bottom in the December, mid, middle of December, about a year later. Uh, the, the actual bottom, I believe, was December 15th, uh, whatever it was, 3200 bucks or so, whatever it got down to. And, and so he's had some really good calls. I just think he's wrong about XRP. But even he, and this is why I want to highlight this, like when, when there's an XRP hater out there saying, yeah, XRP looks like it might go, I'm like, I'm going to listen. And so uh, somebody tagged Peter Brown here and said, can you please chart XRP so we can compare your work in blockchain backer? Please, good sir. And Peter Brandt did respond to share the chart that's on your screen right now and said, Case can be made, XRP is getting set for big run up. So even an XRP hater is saying that. Um, so lots of good stuff. Obviously, you know, we're out of the depths of the bear market of 2022, well outside of that. You've got the conclusion of the SEC v. Ripple case coming here. And more institutional money coming. And this, I want to take a minute or two to talk about this. So take a look at this headline from the Daily Hoddle. Bullish Bitcoin signal flashing for the first time ever according to Invest Answers. And what this has to do with, largely, is this idea that there's really not that much crypto out there. So he's focusing on Bitcoin here, but it's certainly true of XRP or pick pretty much any other crypto out there. Most of it's not available for sale, and there aren't that many humans in crypto right now. So uh, kudos and congratulations to you if you're listening to this in 2023 for being early compared to almost everybody else who in the future inevitably will be in the crypto. Anyway, piece reads as follows. A widely followed crypto strategist says that one Bitcoin signal is flashing bullish for the first time in the Crypto King's history. The anonymous host of Invest Answers tells his 444,000 YouTube subscribers that Bitcoin's available supply for trade is declining ahead of a halving event for the first time. The available supply is a percentage of the circulating supply that is not being held by hodlers or investors with little history of selling the top digital asset. Bitcoin's next halving event, which is estimated to take place in April of next year, will reduce the amount of new Bitcoin issued to miners from 6.25 Bitcoin per block to 3.125 Bitcoin per block. And I'll, I'll note here, although it's not like that will have no impact, I mean, historically the halving has been the halving, I got it, we understand what that is. But I do think with each subsequent halving, it's going to be that much less impactful. Almost all Bitcoin has already been mined. And so if you cut in half what is already almost a, a, a nothing number, uh, it's, it's, it's only going to do so much. Uh, but anyway, but let's be clear, I'm not saying it doesn't matter. I'm just saying it's increasingly less consequential. That's the argument I make. But anyway, here's a quote from him. The point of this chart here, as you can see, is the available hodler supply as a percentage of total supply and marked in black dots are the actual halving cycles. This is the first time ever 
ever in a halving cycle where the supply is going to be is going down before we're even in it, ladies and gentlemen, and that is exciting as hell, end quote. According to the trader, the declining supply could be a catalyst for a huge bull run. And he said, quote, This decline in supply is likely to lead to a massive bull run in the future. I don't know if it's this bull run we're currently in or the next, but it's coming. That I am certain of. This is because there is more demand every single day for Bitcoin and the supply is drying up. And that means the price goes up. That means the pace of hardness is increasing, end quote. Uh, he also says that further institutional adoption, including BlackRock's application for a spot Bitcoin ETF, is going to increase demand for the asset and further crunch supply. Yeah, so check this out. So not only is there a reduction, a reduction in the amount of uh, Bitcoin that you can currently purchase today, uh, but more money is going to be flowing in. Like, I, I don't know how you could be, anyone could be aware of what I'm sharing here and then not be excited about this and not think that this is the case here. So take a look at this quote, and I think this is absolutely spot on, which is why I don't think it's possible uh, for me to exaggerate, you know, the, the, the importance of, of this this move with BlackRock jumping into crypto. I mean, technically, they, they announced they were jumping in last summer and they did some stuff with Coinbase, but in terms of the, the, the spot Bitcoin ETF, that's the big one there. Uh, so anyway, here's a quote from him. And the institutions are here. BlackRock, Fidelity, Deutsche Bank, Credit Agricole, Citadel, you name it. They're all coming and probably hundreds more. And even these few names run assets under management of $27 trillion. <laughs> $27 trillion. You know, I mentioned in a couple of recent videos that uh, some experts uh, were estimating that even if just 0.3% of BlackRock's assets under management uh, were to flow into crypto, that would, that would be enough to purchase all Bitcoin and all XRP that's available for sale today. All of it. 0.3%. <laughs> and you know what happens as money flows in? Like, prices get bit up here. Anyway, and then he says, and the market cap of Bitcoin is half a trillion dollars. It's ridiculous. And only a tiny fraction of that, half a trillion dollars of market cap is for sale. So you guys can do the math. It is the most beautiful macro and economic experiment I've ever seen in my life. And I get excited every day to look at the data. End quote. Uh, yep, I share that excitement about that concept. I've talked about it a number of times. It's been a long time since I brought that up, probably. But uh, I was talking about it a fair bit, and, and you know, probably in 2020 and in uh, 2021, as things were ramping up uh, price-wise. And it's true. There's just there's not that much crypto out there. It's a small percentage of, of you know that crypto in existence that's available at any moment in time. And then if, if, you, if you think that maybe I might be a little bit early, as I think we all are here, it's just, it, like he said here, do the math. You go ahead and do the math here. I don't think you're going to be disappointed. So there's just, there's uh, well, admittedly, yes, there's a lot of uncertainty in crypto right now, especially from a legal perspective. I just think there's so much opportunity. So I'm just going to wait this damn thing out. I think the best days are yet ahead. And <laughs> there's a reason that uh, crypto has been so life-changing for so many people, and I believe will continue to be so life-changing for so many people. It's an opportunity for the everyday person uh, to better themselves from a, a financial perspective and achieve life-changing wealth. You can't do this anywhere else on Earth just by investing in something like, like this. I'm not saying that there haven't been instances where individual stocks or this or that have been incredible opportunities, but if you're talking about an asset class, there's never been anything like this in the history of our species. So congratulations again for being here. Exciting times. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Family Sedan.